Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Economic Times live webinar, Hybrid Multi-Cloud Mains, creating the best one for your enterprise, powered by Tata Communications. This is Krishna Mukherjee from ETH, thanking you all for joining in today. Well, digital transformation is here. To meet this transformation imperative, businesses are applying new technologies to restructuring and redefining their business processes. Of course, cloud plays a crucial role in any kind of digital transformation. The cloud computing market is now worth $180 billion in vendor revenues, with the market still growing by 24% annually. Businesses are also they are adopting different kinds, hybrid and multi-cloud strategies that incorporate and integrate on-premises and off-premises resources, as well as multiple public cloud platforms to provide the most effective venues for executing workloads across their organizations. But ladies and gentlemen, adopting a smooth and seamless hybrid multi-cloud platform is not at all an easy task. It requires extensive understanding on the platforms, careful migration approach, and lastly, a pool of experts to manage these diverse platforms. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are too glad to have Karen Fry, Senior Industry Analyst, Cloud Services, Frost and Sullivan, and Rajesh Avasti, AVP and Head, IZO Cloud and Manage Hosting Services, Data Communication, Industry Experts with us, who will throw light on hybrid multi-cloud platform. Before I hand it over to them, request you all to be placed, please press until the end of the webinar, answer polls and feedback form. With that, thank you so much. Welcome Karin and Rajesh, over to you Karin first. Thank you. that the cloud, which at the time was synonymous with the public cloud, would replace private data centers within five years. The cloud model promised benefits like scalability, uh, cost effectiveness, and fast, easy deployment, and it allowed organizations to get out of the data center business. But what the industry expected hasn't quite happened today. Today, businesses are deploying a range of infrastructure models, both on their premises and hosted by third-party providers based on the best infrastructure to provide a foundation for each workload being deployed. So what has happened between 2010 and today to change that course of, uh, of infrastructure and what businesses are implementing? The answer that everyone's talking about is digital transformation. The rapid pace of change, the fundamental shift in the way businesses operate and interact with customers, with IT becoming more of a service broker, it calls some sort of a transformation within the IT department, as well as within the business as a whole. Business stakeholders and IT organizations have a lot of expectations to meet. Within the business, leaders are expecting digital transformation to increase their speed to market for new products and services. They're expecting to drive innovation and ensure the security of their intellectual knowledge, as well as compliance with industry regulations. Their infrastructure needs to help undergird their growth and expansion plans, all while delivering cost efficiencies. In order to help the business meet these lofty goals, IT also has its own expectations for a digital transformation. IT is shifting from becoming a cost center to becoming a service broker to the business. It's enabling new technologies like Internet of Things, analytics and artificial intelligence, and mobile access to business services. IT is also seeking to create and enhance opportunities for collaboration and partnerships, all of which drive productivity and business results. For IT leaders, digital transformation puts more pressure on their cloud strategy. The business has to achieve more, and they're looking to the cloud to meet those goals. 
IT departments are looking at the cloud as providing both strategic and tactical benefits. On the business strategy side, 80% of business respondents to recent Frost & Sullivan survey said that they want to position their companies to take advantage of new technologies, while 78% are citing their digital transformation as key um, it's key of their driver to their move to the cloud. Many also want to bring new services to the business more quickly, and they have the ability to add those new applications like IoT and AI into their capabilities. And yet, enterprises believe that not all of their goals can be met with public cloud. Almost 40% have adopted a cloud-first approach for their new applications, but their migrating business-critical legacy application, that migration proves much more difficult. And so those are more often staying on the customer's premises or in a private hosted environment. At the right of this slide, we see the top reasons cited by businesses for not placing a workload in the public cloud. Uh, we see a, a majority are concerned about security risks or unauthorized access to their data or applications. Um, the premises deployment, it allows for a greater degree of customization, which then helps things like application availability. And they have concerns about poor or inconsistent application performance in the public cloud. So I'd like to pause here for Krishna to put up a poll, and we want to just ask you all, how far is your company on a hybrid or multi-cloud journey? Choose your best answer. Okay, so we'll, we'll move forward. So we've just seen that public cloud won't serve all of an enterprise's needs. On the other hand, businesses don't believe that the traditional premises data center is adequate for digital transformation either. Even when they build a private cloud on the business premises, there can be challenges. While 57% of respondents to our 2019 cloud user survey said that they expect to increase their premises data centers in the coming year, they still struggle with rising costs, inflexible configurations, and the manual effort that's required to run their own facility. For some businesses, it even leads them to turn to providers for managed services, as those may help them to meet their needs. So we've talked about several distinct in infrastructure environments. We've talked about public cloud. We've talked about premises, private cloud deployments, hosted private cloud. And one thing we've learned is that enterprises don't want the management burden of multiple separate environments. They're looking for a hybrid environment that integrates numerous infrastructure types that are managed as a cohesive unit. Here, we see that businesses want to integrate a variety of different infrastructures into their hybrid environment, with many businesses stating they want the option to integrate any deployment option from uh, infrastructure as a service to commercial SaaS to different vendors' platforms into that hybrid environment. Benefits of a diverse hybrid environment include uh, a faster speed to market for products and services, a flexible infrastructure to support the business, consistent tooling, security, availability, and consistent control across all infrastructures. Based on our survey results, many businesses like the idea of a hybrid cloud environment, but they really still struggle with deployment for a variety of reasons, including those security concerns that we talked about before, the unauthorized access to data or applications. Um, many feel they don't have complete visibility across their cloud and data center when they have a hybrid configuration. Um, they do fear some loss of control over applications. And there's also inability to meet compliance requirements. 68% uh, cite their lack of expertise. Because it's such a struggle, most businesses are seeking out the help of a trusted partner. We see that fully 98% of businesses 
engage an outside expert to help them design, implement, or manage their hybrid IT environment. But not all partners have the right expertise and experience. We see it right, there's a, a multitude of partners to choose from, from your cloud services broker, to your data center infrastructure provider, um, a value-added reseller or some other sort of independent consultant, uh, network provider. There are a variety of different types of partners that, that businesses can turn to for help with their hybrid cloud today. It's clearly critical to have a partner that can help you integrate your hybrid environment in the best possible way for your business. Some of the criteria that we at Frost and Sullivan suggest that businesses look for are the hybrid management ability, the ability to really give that consistent um, visibility and control over a complete environment, a robust management portal, um, one that has integrated security and integration of managed services so that you have the ability to reach out to trusted experts when necessary. We also believe it's important to have multiple data centers in uh, diverse geographies. Um, the ability to call on your provider for backup and recovery assistance or for things like compliance support. At Frost & Sullivan, we found Tata Communications to be a strong partner to meet enterprise hybrid cloud needs. At this time, I'm going to turn the pre presentation over to Rajesh to tell you a little bit more about how Tata Communications can help your business beat the hybrid cloud maze. Rajesh? Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, and that's a good perspective uh, uh, to get uh, how organizations are looking at deploying their workloads on cloud, which could be a private cloud hosted within their own data centers, or be it on a public cloud environment, or at times also creating a hybrid environment. Uh, and, and what we hear from most of our enterprise customers is that uh, cloud is the normal, uh, is the norm today in, in, in the IT uh, deployment infrastructure. And that is what is getting validated uh, by the uh, poll question that you had, that around 31% people stated that they have implemented uh, some form of the cloud. They have 14% of the people uh, stated they have their workloads on premise and some things on cloud. Some of them are considering. So we are we are talking about majority of them around 53% uh, uh, or 63% or people talking about uh, using this thing, uh, using cloud in some form uh, for some of the workloads within the organization. And it becomes very important in that scenario to look at uh, how do you work with a partner who can help you uh, in this cloud journey, which you are uh, looking uh, out for. And that's where Tata Communication as an organization uh, can uh, bridge in that requirement for our enterprise customers as a trusted partner uh, to, in, in, in this journey. That's what we do. Just to set a context where we come in from as Tata Communication, uh, what we help our enterprise customers, uh, and I'm sure most of you know that we are a B2B company. That means uh, we are not into mobility business, but we are predominantly a network player, uh, which is into B2B space. And over a period of time, we have evolved with our customer needs, uh, where they were looking at uh, solutions uh, in digital transformation, which included uh, their cloud adoption or data center adoption journey, uh, which included uh, the security uh, needs uh, arising because of the cyber uh, attacks which are coming up on the digital uh, workplace for our customers. Uh, also uh, helping our customers in their unified communication and collaboration space. But if I narrow down specifically on the uh, cloud journey which our customers are taking, what we give to our customers is that you get a unified experience across plethora of deployments that you can you can deploy on. Uh, you could look at uh, Tata Communication as a provider who could give you uh, managed services on infrastructure which you have already invested on and can co-locate co within our data center and we can do the management for that. That's what we are calling as the managed colo. Uh, if you are looking at uh, a bespoke solution, it has to be a dedicated because of the compliance or regulatory requirement. 
or because of the application being not available on the public cloud environment or a, uh, not best suited for cloud environment, it could be still consumed as a service or IT infrastructure as a service in form of managed hosting services. Uh, that combined with our ISO cloud offering, which includes the multi-tenant ISO private cloud or a ISO cloud storage, depending on what the workload that we are talking of. Uh, along with that, also looking at uh, uh, managed public cloud services like managed services for Azure or AWS. What is mentioned here is Azure, but it, it is as much applicable for AWS and also looking at uh, Google container uh, cloud platform or GCP as they call it. Or if customers are looking at uh, uh, doing application modernization, because that's going to become very important as people are going to adopt cloud technologies and want to reap maximum benefits out of that. And that's where people will look at ISO cloud containers as well as look at uh, a platform which would help them to get uh, information from the data which they are going to store on these environment. And that's where they are going to uh, look at an analytics platform. Uh, not only that, there would be requirements which would come in from customers from various industry vertical and one such industry vertical is government uh, where government stated that they want a separate physical cloud node for their government customers or, or the different departments or ministries within the government. And that's where a uh, government community cloud uh, is something which was formed by data communication. All this integrated along with the managed security services from data communication through a single pane of management that we uh, deliver to our customers uh, through the portal that we call as ISO cloud command, which is a orchestration layer and a management uh, layer for our customers. Uh, that's what we do from data communication uh, perspective from our side. But this, when I state, is not a one-time activity that we do with the, our customer. It's a journey that we uh, work along with our customers. And when we look at that, uh, what it includes is a planned approach. And when you're saying planned approach, where you start is basically you look at your digital estate, you assess whether that is something which can be deployed on a dedicated infrastructure which you may have within your own uh, on-premise data center or hosted with some third party like Tata communication or whether it can be deployed on a, a public cloud like Azure, AWS or GCP or even a hosted private cloud like ISO private cloud. So that's where you start off with. Once you've done the assessment based on our experience, we help our customers with the best approach to move to which environment. Uh, which would include migrating without disrupting the business because more and more customers today have their IT uh, becoming very critical to run their operations and hence disruption is not something which is uh, taken very uh, well by the business and hence there is a pressure on IT to make sure that the disruption is uh, limited when that migration is happening uh, or, or near zero I would say. Uh, once that is done basically you also need to sh make sure that you manage it as a routine. Uh, so far, people have been managing their own data center, but your data center now is a virtual data center because you may have certain workloads deployed on your own data center, certain workloads running on maybe AWS or Azure or uh, GCP and maybe some of the other things deployed with some hosting company. Uh, and, and, and this is becoming very normal within data communication also when we talk about we have our HR management system, uh, which is a SaaS services that we are taking. Uh, I'm sure most of your uh, environments also, you are using messaging system, uh, maybe from uh, people like uh, O365 or Google, uh, giving those services to you. Uh, so you need to now manage a virtual data center, and that's what we are calling as, add as the manage as a routine, basically. But that's not all. With these environments being available for paper consume kind of a model you also need to look at how do you optimize i'm sure you will be able to associate with me no cfo cfo gives you budgets where which are unlimited and they want a predictive number that you would spend on the it uh, requirements which are coming in for the business applications that you are deploying so how do you make sure that you optimize the redundancies which are there in the system still re-innovate to upgrade and be in line with how customers are looking for. And that's going to become very important for any of the customers. So if you talk about migration, uh, how do we go about basically? This is a, a, a good 10 step approach that we take. We uh, help our customers with an assessment. 
Uh, this assessment is done uh, based on certain tools being used, uh, which give you a framework for uh, best practices uh, uh, being adopted by multiple global enterprise customers. Uh, associated with that comes the skill set and our experience in migrating some of the customers and assessing what uh, they need. Look at the cost uh, benefits that you could get from various platforms. Uh, because most of the times you may have a workload, let's say, and I'm giving in a hypothetical example, if it is a Windows based environment, maybe Azure may come out to be a cheaper environment for you. Uh, although at times you would have uh, uh, even AWS coming up with an environment which could be a very good environment for a Linux based uh, deployment or Google uh, talking about a, a new age micro uh, services based architecture application deployed on a containers managed through Kubernetes, maybe a better platform for those kind of a thing. So you do a cost analysis on that after doing the assessment. And based on that, you create a plan. That plan needs to work uh, to make sure that there is near zero time, zero downtime during the migration space. And that's the methodology that we would adopt with the migration tools. And then we will look at that we monitor that uh, for a certain period of time and then we do a cutover so that we have minimal downtime uh, that we do. Once the cutover happens, you look at a validation whether it is working uh, along with the testing and then you deliver it for the production environment. And that's where the managed services uh, lifecycle uh, begins for the customers. Uh, followed by basically constant monitoring and management. This is very important because uh, when you're saying that you are going digital, more and more your customer is going to depend on this digital estate that you are creating for your customers. So making sure that you are getting optimal performance both from availability as well as from the uh, capability perspective, it is very important. And that's where service monitoring becomes very important. So you need to look at a proactive IT infrastructure management with automated alerts based on the preset thresholds that you define along with the uh, service provider that you are taking and also looking at automated uh, ticketing and tracking uh, integrated with the ticketing system which is there. So you need to look at a partner who is not only giving you just a platform but also giving you these service management capabilities which include incident management. That means if there is a problem that you're facing, how do you make sure that you get a similar experience over a period of time? How do you make sure that if there is a change which need to be incorporated, that change is done in a proper fashion. Problem management, configuration management, and patch management. I'm sure within your own data centers, you've been doing the services management capabilities uh, for, your, for your environment. But the same things may not be available on a public cloud environment. So how do you assure that service management is seamless across multiple platforms? Even if it is available on, let's say, platform A versus platform B, uh, there could be differences in uh, that compliance uh, or, or the service management, the way they are doing it. How do you give that seamless experience to customer is where you need service management uh, coming into play. And this comes with some industry leading tools, uh, which may be deployed as part of the service delivery and assurance, which would include the monitoring tools, patching tools or automated ticketing tools, uh, which are delivered as a service when you're looking at a managed services partner for this digital transformation. And this comes with uh, the best practices by industry, which would include like ITSM, which you have been using, or uh, information security management services, uh, which are for uh, superior service delivery. And this is something which is getting, getting validated by various certifications, which the service providers are delivering uh, their services through. You, you could have 27,001 or a ISO uh, 20,000 or ICE uh, type two uh, certification. So these are certain uh, uh, standard certifications that you may have. There could be industry specific certifications also, which may be required. Like if you are from a healthcare industry, you may want to have a provider who will give you HIPAA certified environment. Or if you are from a, a payment uh, card industry, so you would want uh, uh, PCI DSS compliance. Uh, we've also seen some of the customers, like in India, uh, Ministry of Electronics and IT came up with uh, empanelment of various cloud providers. And that's where they stated that we want to do a STQC audit also on these environments, whether these services are in line with what they are talking about. And that's something which becomes a good benchmark for some customers. Similarly, 
if you go to singapore uh, singapore government came out with their own assessment uh, for the cloud platform which they call as mtcs and they graded it into three different levels which is mtcs level one being the lowest and uh, mtcs uh, level three or tier three being the highest for environments which need maximum compliance as per your requirement can be deployed on tier three or uh, level three similarly if you talk about europe uh, people talk about gdpr compliance or it could be related to some of the other industry vertical compliances which i spoke and this is something what you get from people who have been trained for managing these environments and that's where you look at people who are certified uh, to run the operations 24 cross 7 uh, manned by these professionals who are certified on these environments so this is certain things which you should look at when you are evaluating a managed services partner for your cloud adoption journey uh, but not only that what is also important is how do you make sure that you optimize the environment based on the needs which you have and it starts with basically identifying the services that are best suited for the, the current requirement that you are looking at over a period of time look at creating a performance and cost optimization plan with the managed services provider uh, once that plan has been created look at implementing that and analyze over a period of time so it's a cyclic uh, uh, i would say a manner in which you should look at and there should be a continuous uh, improvement uh, plan that you should create with the managed services partner that you are going to work on uh, that's how it is going to become very important for our, our, our customers like you uh, another area that you need to look at when you are looking at a managed services provider is whether that provider is helping you to create a customizable environment which could be a hybrid environment when i'm saying hybrid it could include certain components because of the application being a monolithic application deployed on a proprietary or a physical environment when i'm saying proprietary and i'm giving some examples here uh, in insurance sector, there are some applications which still run on AS400 servers. These are proprietary systems which are available from some of the vendors. Or some of the people have deployed workloads which are running, let's say, on AIX environments or Solaris environments. And they have to continue till the time they are migrated into a new or a latest version of that application vendor that you are working with. So you may want that along with a highly scalable and agile environment which you can take from a cloud uh, which could be a hosted cloud like iso private cloud or it could be a public cloud services from uh, like azure or aws but you are aware that most of these public cloud services normally are accessed through internet uh, and and you get an internet access or a ill or a leased line which is internet leased line that you take to access these environments but if it is a critical workload which has to work with your own dedicated environment how do you make sure that you have a lan like speed between these two environments because they have to talk to each other and i'm giving you an example here let's say you say that you want to deploy an erp and i'm taking a, a hypothetical example sap s4 hana where you want to deploy your test and development or uat environments on cloud and today they are available on aws and azure so you want to deploy that on azure and aws along with that for your production environments you want a predictive performance you want to deploy it on a dedicated physical environment so maybe you want to deploy it on uh, on a hosted model and that's very important for you so how do you take care of the interconnect between these two environments because you may run your apps on cloud but your database which is the hana database may be a dedicated appliance or a tdi box that you want to deploy for your customer and that's where as an integrated player we bring to the table uh, extending express route from azure or direct connect from uh, aws to your last mile using our mpls network and giving you a speed which is more like a LAN speed, uh, this thing. We've seen some of the customers extending this kind of a model for the deployments for S4 HANA, where production environment, they have gone in for a dedicated uh, appliance or a TDI box, but for, and, and their apps are running on the cloud environment along with the 
entire UAT test and development environment uh, on, on the cloud environment. And this is what we are calling as a fully managed multi-cloud environment or a hybrid environment, depending on how you position it. Okay. And that's something which is becoming very important. And you look at a partner who, who should be able to give this end to end experience for you, which is fully managed, integrated with, for, with various uh, uh, things which are you're talking about, but not only there, but also helping you to secure those environment. And that's what we as data communication help our customers with as a managed services partners when we are talking to uh, our customers for their cloud journey when they are looking at digital transformation as one of the areas. With that, I am through with my session. Uh, and Karen, uh, I invite you back for Q&A session. We'll be more than happy to take your questions. If you have your questions, please, uh, uh, we, we, I, I'll ask uh, Krishna to uh, help us out with uh, moderating those uh, question and answer uh, session. Yeah, uh, sure, sure, Rajesh. Thank you so much for those insights. Thank you, Karen for those insights. So here, as we get into Q&A session, uh, Rajesh, if you can just respond to that, what does ISO cloud container built on? What offering is it or how containerization is achieved? If you can elaborate a bit about this. So ISO cloud is the platform that we have created. So that's a framework. We are, it's a multiple services from our side. Uh, it includes a uh, VMware verified uh, cloud node that we have created, which is using technologies being used by most of the customers in their enterprise data centers, uh, which includes uh, uh, VMware ESX or vSphere, which is the hypervisor uh, platform from VMware. Along with that, also giving uh, a network uh, a function virtualization, uh, which is through VCN or NSX from VMware. Uh, orchestrated by vCloud director and having a single pane of management uh, using our ISO cloud command. That's what we deliver as ISO private cloud from our side. And what we are saying is that if a customer has on-premise VMware environment, uh, this environment, ISO private cloud, could be an extended environment for that because it is using similar technologies. We're also aware that VMware also has come out with a similar environments being available on public cloud uh, services, which they are calling as VMware Cloud on AWS or VMC on AWS in short. So what we are saying is that ISO private cloud gets extended in form of a private cloud or a multi-tenanted cloud environment, which is a logical virtual private cloud that we can create for any of our customers, giving them an, a similar experience which they have been using within their own, own environment. That is one part of it. The second part of the ISO platform is the services that we give on the storage space. Uh, we see more and more customers coming in with the requirement that they have to retain data, uh, which is structured and unstructured data for very long uh, period uh, for retention, could be for regulatory requirement for some other requirements. And that's where we provide ISO cloud storage services from our side. Uh, but not only that, a lot of customers are coming back and saying, we've been today using a monolithic application or a three-tier application like a web app and DB kind of application, but we want to migrate to a microservices-based application architecture, which is uh, what has been used by some born-in cloud application providers. Uh, and we want to migrate to those environments, and that's where they want to leverage the benefit of containers. So what we bring to the table as ISO cloud containers is a containerized platform uh, which is managed through Kubernetes, uh, but giving a single pane of management through our ISO cloud command. But the underlying technology again comes from our uh, partner, which is VMware, which we are talking of, uh, giving a customers an environment where certain workloads may continue uh, at taking benefits of the virtual environment which they had. Certain applications which are getting migrated to these microservices based architecture can be deployed on containers deployed on top of these uh, VMs or on bare metal servers, uh, thus giving a hybrid environment for our customers. Not only that, this can also be extended to native AWS platforms. Um, and, and, and those services are today available. You know, uh, on AWS, you have uh, EKS or Elastic Kubernetes services. 
that is nothing but a kubernetes managed uh, containerized platform on aws or a aks which is azure kubernetes services which is a similar environment being available on uh, the uh, public cloud services environment like azure so what we deliver to our customers is plethora of options on which they can deploy their application uh, which is managed by Tata Communication through our single pane of management, which we are calling as ISO Cloud Command. I hope that gives a perspective what uh, we mean by ISO. So it's a platform or a framework that we have created for multiple services, which include ISO Private Cloud, which includes uh, ISO Cloud Storage, which includes ISO Cloud Containers. It contains ISO Cloud Analytics Platform, which is a platform for creating data lakes. Uh, or it would include even the connectivity between with the public cloud providers like AWS Azure as well as SFTC using ISO private connect. So it's a platform services from our side. I hope that gives clarity. Thanks for that Rajesh. Thanks for elaborating. Um, just wanted to ask you like if I ask you about the USP for this, if you can help out with some of the USPs that would be really wonderful of ISO. How, what are the key differentiators? Uh, so as, as I was telling, uh, one, it is highly customized and it can be deployed in various forms for our customers, thus giving them options to deploy. So we are not saying uh, one bill fits all basically. Uh, it depends on what workloads that you have, where you are in your cloud journey, basis that we could help a creating a solution which could be best suited for your environment. And I'm giving an example. A lot of customers come back and say that we uh, procured these hardware maybe one and a half years or two years back. They have not been depreciated in our books. And I'm sure a CFO will not let you do away with that uh, hardware which has not been depreciated in, in your books and let you move to the cloud environment unless or until you work with them and tell that the total cost of ownership is taking care of that thing also. So what we can do is we can help creating a hybrid environment which could use customers as it, which has not been depreciated in their books, work along with the cloud environment and creating a hybrid model for them. That's one way of doing it. Second, very important USP in my view, which is what Tata Communication bring is the IT services management framework that we deploy across these environments, thus giving customers, enterprise customers, control over this vastly agile and scalable uh, platforms which are available, which is like AWS and Azure. Because, uh, and, and I'm giving you an example here, some of our customers come back and say, that when we are creating a test and development environment, we do not want to use, let's say Red Hat, uh, enterprise Linux because that's a subscription cost associated with that. For test and development, we would want to use a CentOS or Ubuntu platform. So when a VM is spun off for test and development, it is automatically using Ubuntu or CentOS. This is one example, very simple example, but this is what we help in templatizing some of those uh, environments. So that's something which we help our customers. with. The other example could be for the test and development environments, we templatize that we should be able to do a snapshot based backup end of the day. But for a production environment, we want a full fledged backup. So you could create a template and deploy on any platform. So these are some of the things which we help our customers, wherein we bring back the control with agility and scalability, which they get from these environments. These are some of the USPs that we bring from Tata Communication when we are talking of a, uh, a multi-cloud management uh, platform from Tata Communication delivered as a service. Thank you, Rajesh. Let me reach out to Karin now. Karin, if you can help us understand that as what would be your message to the organizations who are looking forward to adopting a smooth and seamless hybrid multi-cloud platform? Maybe uh, some pointers, some factors, you know, they should, or the organization should keep in mind while embarking on hybrid multi-cloud platform, if you can help out with that. Right, sure. So as we saw during the presentation, businesses do really struggle with a lot of uh, challenge or pain points during the hybrid cloud integration uh, 
uh, process for their company. Um, I would say don't go it alone. Uh, look for that trusted partner or advisor. I know that when we looked at this market, um, one thing that we found with Tata Communications was the fact that um, they were able to integrate such a, a strong and broad breadth of infrastructures uh, through their ISO platform um, that uh, was really uh, rare in the industry. So you want to be looking for a partner that can integrate all of the different infrastructures that you need, um, that can manage security and compliance. Those are two of the biggest key pain points that we see. Um, and with ISO having security uh, integrated directly into the platform, um, being able to integrate that security consistently across all of the infrastructures. Um, you know, I know ISO uses that templatized um, process to deploy, um, to deploy instances and whatnot. It really is important to have that consistency to be able to uh, deploy your security and your governance policies to be sure that you're getting that consistency across the entire environment. Um, you know, in previous uh, platforms, models, um, you know, previous years, it was very difficult to achieve governance consistently across that hybrid environment. And what businesses are looking more towards now is achieving more of that consistent control um, so that you're deploying a policy once and it's effective across your entire environment. Um, so getting a partner that can really help you achieve that consistency and that governance across the entire environment uh, is, is critical. Um, Migration help is, is always a big challenge and one that, um, as Rajesh was talking about, the container strategy, um, containers are really helping with workload portability. And so having someone that can help in that respect as well, um, really very important. Um, so really just looking for a, a provider that can offer um, consistency and control across a hybrid deployment. Um, I think that that would be one of the biggest keys um, and to ensure that they're able to meet your customization needs as you uh, deploy your hybrid environment. Yeah, Karen, very rightly said, trusted partner first. Uh, thank you so much, Karen, for those insights. Well, Anuradha wants to know that, uh, she basically wants to know about uh, ISO Cloud. So Anuradha, we can get in touch with you offline for this because uh, uh, the Tata Communication team would like to connect with you offline for this. Uh, she, want, she has some queries related to the presentation about the services also. So we will definitely connect with you offline on this. You can reach out to me at krishna.mukherjee at timesgroup.com and uh, the data communication team would reach out for that. And with that, uh, let me reach out to Naveen now. Naveen, any hands, any queries we have? Any hand raising? Naveen, if you can help us spot. Okay, I don't think we have any hand raising over there. So, uh, Rajesh, if you can help us with your final word. Uh, so, uh, the uh, final words from our side is that one of the important things that uh, when you are evaluating cloud or a cloud for digital transformation journey, uh, do not only look at the platforms which are available there but look at a full journey that you have to go through. And that's where you should look at a trusted partner who can help you with various options and also give you the industry best practices in that journey when you are moving into cloud environment. So that's what I would say are some of the important things. Uh, one more thing which is very important, technology is a very good enabler, but when you are moving into cloud arena uh, uh, or, or uh, uh, taking services on the cloud space, uh, what is also important is how do you make sure that you sign a contract where SLAs are aligned with what you want to do. So work with a partner who is 
open to work with you on SLAs, who's open to work on various cloud platforms and give you flexibility, uh, who's able to work with you in your entire journey, which is not only your today's requirement, but also helping you out in uh, optimizing some of the workloads or even looking at uh, re-architecting some of the uh, workloads that you have to uh, get best benefits of the new technologies like containers integrated with the security uh, services from that because more and more when your environments would move into digital estate uh, your cyber threats are going to increase which may impact your business so having a partner with a fully integrated security services is going to become very important and that's where you should look at a trusted partner who would be able to help you in that entire journey so those those would be my uh, suggestion to any of the customers who are looking for this transition yeah rajesh so here i could see that there's one more query for you rajesh is iso offering available across all geographies for deployment or as service uh yes uh, from our perspective uh data communication we are a global player uh we have our iso cloud uh, our private cloud and iso cloud storage services and container services available uh, in India, uh, so we have uh, three nodes and uh, two nodes for government community cloud, which I was talking about is only for uh, government and PSU customers as mandated by METI. Uh, we have our services available in Asia Pacific region in Singapore. Uh, uh, so, so we have a uh, uh, couple of nodes there. We have our uh, nodes and services available in Middle East in Dubai. Uh, we cater to our customers in uh, Europe uh, through our uh, cloud nodes uh, in Cressex and Highbridge in UK. And similarly for US, we have similar services available across two coasts, which is uh, at Santa Clara in the West Coast and uh, Secaucus, New Jersey in the West Coast. Uh, so in that sense, yes, it is available across the globe. Uh, over and above that, the managed AWS and Azure services are obviously available as they are deployed across multiple geographies. So we are a, a, a managed services partner for AWS and Azure at a global level. So we deliver these services across these uh, regions, along with the security services, where we have our own uh, uh, multi-tenanted uh, SOC environments through which we can give a cloud-based uh, security incident and event management. So we have it in Singapore. We have it in uh, India, both in Chennai and Pune. Uh, we have it in uh, uh, Dubai. Uh, we are in process of uh, deploying one in UK and US as well. So in, in that sense, this is a global services from data communication, in, including the security services that customers may want along with these digital platforms. Thank you, Rajesh, for those updates. Karen, uh, let me ask you your final word now. Uh, yes, I would just say that it's really critical when businesses are deploying uh, these hybrid environments um, to consider th the breadth of uh, both infrastructures and geographies that your partner uh, can help you to deploy. When we looked at Tata Communications and their hybrid capabilities um, in the last year or so, um, we actually honored them with a, a private cloud award, um, private and hybrid for the platform that they, for the ISO platform, because of the breadth of, of services and the breadth of geographies that they can cover. It's very rare to find a provider who can offer um, just as broad and deep services in its own local region, for example, in India, as well as providing the same services um, in uh, Europe, US, the rest of Asia Pacific, um, these other areas. So I really feel that it's important to find a provider who can really offer uh, these services globally and consistently across uh, a, a complete hybrid environment. Uh, Tata Communications does a fabulous job at this and uh, glad that they were able to get the message out there today um, with regard to the ISO offering. Glad that I was able to set the stage about where um, where the market is is heading in terms of uh, in terms of hybrid cloud. 
Thanks, Karin, for that. I am damn sure about this that post this webinar, Tata Communication is going to receive a lot of queries with regard to ISO Cloud. Any which ways, thank you so much, Karin and Rajesh, for joining us today. It was great having you both today in our webinar. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thanks. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, it's a wrap. Please write to me and share your feedback. My email ID is krishna.mukherjee at timesgroup.com. Also, do share your tech thoughts for 2020. What comes to your mind as we start a new beginning with a new year? With that, we have to close it here. On behalf of the Economic Times, I would like to thank all the participants for joining this webinar. Once you log off, automatically a window will open to capture your feedback. Your feedback is very, very important for us. Please fill in as detailed as possible. Thank you again for joining the Economic Times live webinar powered by Tata Communication. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.